aren't many places in the world where you can get to see this. A company of Challenger 2 tanks and warriors advancing to destroy an enemy who could be coming from any direction. For 41 years, Batters has been offering training for what's known as combined arms manoeuvre, giving armoured regiments the freedom to practice joint attacks, and in more recent years, providing a place for light roll infantry, reconnaissance and troops in protected mobility vehicles to also train. It's absolutely massive, just having the freedom to essentially do what we want and have our own kind of uh, playground for an entire battle group. Uh, it, the training benefit's enormous. It's the only place that you can practice big sweeping manoeuvre. Um, clearly there are all sorts of different theories going on about the future character of conflict, um, but for us, if we're going to develop tempo and agility as an armoured regiment and indeed develop our young commanders, for us as tank soldiers, this is one of the best places in the world to do it. The Medicine Man is a symbol of Battus, recognising the area's roots in battles between the Cree and Blackfoot Indian tribes. The Canadian forces also train here and the land is often used for defence research. In the 1940s, British and Canadian forces used the site to test chemical warfare agents and detonated the largest ever non-nuclear explosions. Now though, the area is a designated wildlife sanctuary and its uninhabited nature has obvious benefits for training. It's quite hard for me to show you from the ground just how big Batus is. In fact, it's 2,690 square kilometres. But to put it into perspective, you could fit all the other areas that the British Army train in across the world, like Brunei, Kenya, Salisbury Plain, into Batus, and there'd still be room to spare. The freedom of movement here is supported by almost a thousand permanent and temporary staff and observer mentors working for Batus. A lot of the training here is where we work from the outside in. Here you've got the flexibility to work from the inside out. So regardless of where you are on the Batus training area, you, you don't always know which direction the enemy is going to be coming from. So whereas other training areas uh, through Europe, um, it's pretty easy to identify what direction you're going to be engaging. But this is a challenging environment both to work in and to live. The Chinook winds bring with them warm air from the Pacific or cold air from the Arctic, making the weather here unpredictable. Throughout the 28-day exercise, soldiers are thoroughly tested. When it's a dry weather, yeah, it's quite, it's quite difficult and the distances we, we've got to try and um, achieve comms over. So mainly putting out extra vehicles as rebros to try and get the extra reach, as we say, trying to get the, um, the signals to go a little bit further. The terrain itself, things like the mozzies are a big thing. I'm getting uh, bitten alive. The heat, the weather, it seems to have a microclimate of its own, just like every other training area the British Army uses. Um, but the heat's quite a big one as well, especially now in the summer. It, it's getting really warm. Prairie Thunder is all about being austere. Soldiers are put under great pressure to see how they perform. They work long hours and operate in basic conditions. It's a world away from home comforts like phone calls, internet access and hot showers, often available on operations. First, there's this sort of challenging psychological pressure that people are under because they've become so used to communicating with friends and family. Um, so, it, so it is difficult for some people. Um, it's a habit to break. Um, Physically, it is incredibly demanding. The light roll guys uh, live light, they fight light, uh, they've got far less probably creature comforts. The guys uh, living off armoured vehicles um, perhaps have a few more creature comforts, they can fit a bit more into the vehicles to keep them warm at night. But on top of their day's training, they have to administrate their vehicles, they have to prepare their vehicles for firing, they have to service those vehicles, and all of that's done outside of the training day, uh, often long into the night and into the wee small hours of the morning. Um, it is incredibly demanding um, physically and mentally for our commanders and our junior leaders, um, and which is why I say it's such a valuable commodity for the British Army to have, which is, which is training here. Afghanistan may still be ongoing for now, but through Batas, 20 Brigade are also looking ahead and preparing for the tough conditions of future conflicts, wherever they might be. Ali Gibson, Forces News, Canada.